Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Melissa King, and I'm back with my money decision story times. So today's story time is titled, It's Worth It to Fill in the Gap. And we're going to go into detail and talk about that in a minute. But before we get started, allow me to introduce my sponsor for this story time and every story time, um, Ty and I Essentials. Hey girls, how are you two doing? I am doing wonderful. Amazing. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Tyler Clopton and I am 12 years old. I am Naya Richards and I am 10 years old. Okay, little ladies. How about your business? We are selling hand sanitizer by Ty and Nice Essentials. Okay, so what makes your sanitizer unique? Because it is sold by us children. <laughs> <laughs> and where is it made? It is made in the U.S. and it has 70% out of alcohol. It kills 99.9% .9 of germs and it has an amazing smell. Okay, so how can we find out more about your business? You can find us on YouTube and Facebook under Thai Nye Essentials. We also have a website, TainiceEssentials.com. Awesome, girls. So, this concludes our interview. Do you have any last words for your customers? I would just want to say thank you for your support. You are helping us save the world in a small, big way. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, Ty and I Essentials, as you can see, scrolling across the screen, and if you heard from their uh, little commercial there, you can order your two ounce, 10 ounce, and one gallon um, jugs of Ty and I Essentials at tyandnyessentials.com. Uh, Ty and I are the daughters of myself and my other, um, my econ business associate, Tony Clopton. Tony Clopton also has a page here on YouTube, so check him out. He is always giving out great financial tips, and I can assure you that he will have something beneficial for your financial life every day. Now, uh, Tony and I are both my econ business associates, meaning we are home-based business owners, and the purpose of my story time and I wanted to be able to share some of my financial ups and downs because some are failures stories and some are, you know, success stories. But either way, there's a lesson learned. And I felt like maybe it could benefit somebody, you know, without them having to go through what I went through, especially on those negative ones. OK, so let's talk about filling in the gap. Now, I'm going to take these glasses off because I feel like the um, reflection is killing me in the camera. Okay, so um, this is gonna feel remedial to some of you, but some of you may be like myself, who at the tender age of 32 was purchasing my first vehicle completely on my own. Now, if you've listened to my other story time, um, you know that I had quite an experience with a previous purchase of a vehicle that I learned a very valuable lesson from. I'll let you check that out. I think I titled that one, um, what did I title it? Oh, my $50,000 truck purchase. So check that out. Now in this story, you know, I'm quite a few years older. Uh, like I said, I'm 32 at this point. I'm living in South Carolina. Um, I have a job where I'm doing 100% travel where I'm leaving home on Monday, driving anywhere between North and South Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, Tennessee, um, for an assignment for the week, and then coming back home on Friday. Now, mind you, it is 2007, and I am still riding around in this 99 GMC Jimmy. At this point, the air doesn't work. Um, it is hot as hell in South Carolina during the summer. Um, so if I had to do a road trip, I usually, it wasn't so bad on Mondays because I would usually get up before a day, head out to wherever my assignment was, but coming home on Friday, a lot of times I would get caught 
in all of that traffic and it's like anywhere between 12 noon or later and it is hot. I'm sweating. I'm aggravated. I feel like I'm working hard. Why am I punishing myself by driving in this hot box? And the thing was to get the air fixed was to me not worth the investment when I was really considering getting another car anyway, because it wasn't like I just needed to add some coolant. I needed an actual air compressor. And I had done the pricing and I'm just like, you know what? It's time to get a car. So I decided, you know, I've been working on my credit. Um, I hadn't pulled the report, but I knew I was paying bills on time and I had paid some things off. And I probably should have ran it before I went, but I didn't. I felt confident that I was, you know, as far as credit goes, that I was good. So I go to the dealership, you know, already. I have it in my mind because I've heard over the years that car dealers, when they see women come in by themselves, they are going to try to take advantage of me. So I'm already going in knowing y'all are going to try to get me. You're not going to get me because I've done my research. Technically, I hadn't. But I was ready to argue, if nothing else. So anyway, I get there. You know, my expectations were very realistic. After my first experience of having a car note, it was five hundred sixty-four dollars and seventy-eight cents um, for for over six years. I learned a very valuable lesson that I did not want a car note of more than three hundred dollars a month. So my expectations, like I said, were realistic. I knew I was willing to spend this much money, so I couldn't expect to get this much car. So when I went in, I test drove a few vehicles, you know, kind of gave them a price range I wanted to stay in. Um, and what I ended up settling on was a Kia Sophia. Now, it was a nice car. I mean, it wasn't, you know, aesthetically, it was a nice car. It wasn't extra fancy, but it wasn't like, you know, cheap looking either. It was a nice car. I needed something that was going to be reliable. The mileage was low. It was in my price range. So they let me drive it home for the weekend. Um, you know, that's how they get you to go ahead and, you know, they think that's going to make a difference. But honestly, if I wasn't going to get it, I would just was not going to get it. But, you know, I um, felt good about it. So when I get ready to go back on Monday and we're getting ready to finalize things, um, they bring up gap insurance. Well, this wasn't something that I was prepared for. I had never heard of gap insurance. Um, I guess when the, my dad got the other cars and the, the person, you know, the relative I got did the paperwork on the other car, they took care of it, but it was never discussed with me. So I'm asking the dealer, what exactly is gap insurance and do I have to have it? And he explains to me, you don't have to have it, but it would be in your best interest to have it because should something happen, that the vehicle is um, damaged in any way and you're unable to pay for it, then you would be covered. So I'm thinking to myself, do I really need this? Because I'm like, he, he tried, he's probably trying to sell me something I don't need. So at that point, I think I either called, I want to say it was my dad. It was either my dad or my brother to get their opinion on did I need to get this. So I think it was my dad. And he's like, well, how much is it going to increase your payment? Because I think at that point, we had reached a note of, say, $260 a month. And I was good with that because in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, if I want to pay this off early, I could easily, since I know I had you know, swung the high note before when I wasn't making as much money. Now that I was making, a, you know, better money, I figured if I want to pay it off early, I can pay it off early. So 260 is good. So when they add on the gap insurance, I think it was going to, it took the payment up to like 287, which was still under my 300 mark. But I'm like, 260, 280, do I want to spend it? So, you know, after talking to my dad, you know, he basically was like, I don't think it's, I think it's a good idea for you to get it. I mean, you know, you never know with as much travel as you're doing. You know, there's always a chance that something can happen. So, again, you know, I was still feeling a little bit like, I really kind of feel like they're trying to get me. But I went ahead and got it. Well, I got the car, and I want to say maybe 
I had made eight payments. It was about eight months later. Hadn't had any issues with it. I'm actually back home on a Friday within like five miles of my house. Um, and I'm in a lane looking to make a left-hand turn. Um, and with the oncoming traffic, it was like at a high traffic time. So some of the cars, like there's two lanes of traffic. The lane closest to the middle has gotten to the point where it stopped and is leaving this courtesy space open for me to turn. But what I couldn't see was what was coming on the other side. So I had sat there for a minute and nothing was coming. So, you know, I took my chance, went out there and boom, the oncoming car, which was coming to me at much too fast of a rate for the level of traffic we had. But that's neither here nor there because it was my fault. I ran out in front of them. So the car T-boned me, which made me swerve around and hit another car that was waiting to pull out on um, the left side of the road. So here we have a three-car accident where my car is totaled and it's obviously my fault because I pulled out in front of this car. So at this point, I'm just freaking out because I'm like, I haven't even had this car eight months. Of course, it was totaled after I took it to get, um, you know, for them to look at it. I was able to drive it home, but they basically told me that it would have to be totaled. Good part is this is where my gap insurance kicked in. So basically, Although I had only made eight payments on this car because of the gap insurance, I think in the end, I ended up having to pay maybe 400 and some odd dollars after the gap settled everything that took care of my vehicle and the other two vehicles that were that I, you know, that hit me and I hit the other one. So I actually came out as a winner. Because the gap insurance covered the rest of the car note and it paid for the damages. And I only came out of my pocket the $400 and, you know, whatever I had paid in the, the first eight months. So that really could have been an ugly situation had I not had the gap insurance and I still owed that um, the remainder of the note. Because I, I think it was like a four year or five year note. So my lesson from this is ask questions, get second opinions, but at the end of the day, um, when it comes to gap insurance, it's definitely worth it to fill in the gap. I was worried that I was getting taken for a ride, not realizing that I was about to mess up somebody else's ride, and the gap insurance is what saved my ass. So, that's all I'm going to say for today. Thank you for joining me and I will see you on the next Money Decision Story. Have a good day.